My name is Alana Miller. I'm an integrative psychiatrist in Los Angeles. I also teach and mentor psychiatrists and psych MPs on how to build integrative psychiatry private practices. And if I were to tell you what I love the absolute best about being in private practice, it's having total autonomy over my schedule. So I work when I wanna work. I see the kinds of patients I wanna see. I work the kind of hours I wanna work. If I wanna take vacation, I take vacation. But I would say with that level of autonomy comes a certain level of responsibility too, right? Meaning that if I take vacation, I don't get paid. If I take vacation, I have to make sure there's coverage for my patients or I, you know, check my email once a day and cover. If I have a patient that's difficult or pushing boundaries, I have to be able to work with that situation and work with that patient and solve it. I don't have any supervisor who's going to come in and rescue me. If there's any kind of business or systems problem I'm having, I'm the one who caused it because I set up all the business systems, but I can solve it then too. So I would say private practice probably lends itself to people who really, really like autonomy and like having that level of control and are willing to have that level of responsibility that comes with crafting the kind of life and day that they want and the kind of practice that they want. For those of you wondering about my pre and post appointment workflow, it's pretty straightforward. I'll let you know what it is. Essentially prior to patient appointments, I'll log into my EHR at least five minutes beforehand, just review the chart, take notes in my notebook in terms of what I discussed with that patient last time, what I need to make sure to ask them today, and then do the appointment afterward. My immediate workflow is one, just make sure the patient is scheduled for their follow-up, make sure to put it into my calendar so that slot is blocked. And then I log into my EHR and the billing software I use to make sure the appointment billed and went through. And then if I'm on top of it, I write the note at that point, but I'm often not on top of it. And sometimes I delay writing the notes till maybe like the end of the week. Basically, I write all of my notes or I take notes with patients during the appointment itself. And then I write them in these notebooks. I've got like a gazillion of these five-star notebooks. And then afterward, I transfer them into my EHR. But because I've got the paper notes, at least if I don't write the note till, you know, the end of the week, I, I still remember things. Now, as you know, in private practice, two things. One, time is money. And number two, it's all on you, right? Because presumably you don't have a whole staff of people working for you that are taking care of your admins. So you need to be extremely efficient with your admin. And I feel like I've got this very much covered. I use intake queue for my EHR. I mean, actually, honestly, I use Luminello for charting because when I started my practice in 2017, I felt Luminello was the best EHR that I could find. But now I really think Intake Q is better. So I've switched basically everything over to Intake Q with the exception of charting, but I do all my scheduling, billing, intake forms in Intake Q, and then just upload things as needed into Luminello. It sounds like a hassle. It's really not that much of a hassle. Now with Intake Q, it allows me to really automate so many of my system. So in terms of billing, for example, as part of my intake forms, I collect credit card authorizations that automatically goes into a patient's profile in intake queue. And then at the time of the appointment, or you can set it to do before, or after, whatever you want, it bills the patient according to the fee schedule I set into intake queue in their profile. So all I have to do is log in and make sure the credit card went through and everything worked as it was supposed to, which it pretty much always does. Now a mistake I see people making in private practice is thinking in terms of the admin, the first step is to hire someone else to do it for you. Outsourcing should be the last step you consider after you do the first two steps, which are one, eliminate. If you have an admin task, the first thing is to think, can you just not do this task? Can you get rid of it? I'll give you a really quick example. Initially in my practice, I had an after hours phone line and it makes sense, right? Sometimes patients might need to call you after hours, but it was never used appropriately. Honestly, not once. It was meant to be like an established patient with a reasonable reason to call me, calling me after hours. And it was never that. It was like, I mean, honestly, it was sometimes people who weren't even my patients who just heard it on my voicemail and just wanted to talk to me sooner. It was patients who had missed multiple appointments then just contacting me on the weekend. No, oh, I want that out of in refill from you right now because I couldn't come to that appointment we had scheduled earlier in the week. And it was just driving me totally insane. And so the first thought I had was, oh, maybe I can hire an answering service. But then I'm like, no, I just, can I just get rid of this after hours number? And I did the research, I talked to my malpractice. There was no reason for me to need an after hours number in terms of liability as long as I explained to patients that I didn't have it and what they needed to do if they had an issue after hours. So I just got rid of that and it solved so many problems. So number one, you eliminate tasks if you can. 
Number two, if you can't eliminate them, you automate them. So for example, billing, I don't outsource any of my billing. I don't hire someone else to do it. I just have a very efficient software system in DIT-Q do it automatically. And then I just kind of oversee to make sure it's working. Now, only if you can't eliminate a task and then you also can't automate a task with a software, then do you consider outsourcing it by hiring. But really for most solo private practice clinicians, I really don't think that that's necessary.